Welcome to our Tuesday Chat and Chew. Our guest today is going to be Chris Reed from San Juan County SCORE. Uh, he's going to do, uh, give us a presentation about cash flow management during a pandemic. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow at 10 a.m., our uh, business recovery call will be with our uh, Rick Larson. Uh, we have special registration for this on our website and our Facebook page. So if you go to Stan Wands with an S E D C dot O R G and click on the news section. You can see uh, you can see uh, the, the registration uh, form for that. Uh, once you register, you'll receive a Zoom link. And again, this is from tomorrow from uh, 10 to 11. And uh, another reminder that Friday uh, from 10 to noon is our virtual jobs fair uh, for uh, hiring local here in San Juan County. Uh, there's an employer sign up and there is also an employee sign up as well. And you can see all this on our website, uh, again, sanwansdc.org or on our Facebook page. And Chris has a presentation up. Chris, if you want to go ahead and take it away. Thank you, John. Yeah, I've got a short presentation just to introduce some concepts and I hope there'll be some time for some uh, Q&A, you know, toward the end. Um, you know, this is a potentially a big topic, um, and uh, we'll have to do a, a just by nature a very short introduction to it. Um, but hopefully, I'll give you some key concepts and identify some uh, directions for action should you desire. So, uh, first of all, I'd just like to share you know this you know, st this set of statistics from normal times that um, the top reasons why small business fail um, are often linked to you know cash management either experiencing temporary short cash flow problems that um, are not planned for or recoverable, or just in general running out of the capital they have uh, before they can get to profitability. So those two reasons are you know, two of the top uh, you know, three reasons why, why small businesses do fail. So it's really a critical task you know, for any small business to understand you know, how to manage their cash. Um, um, and it's not simply the same thing as managing your P&L. So, um, you know, as just said, you know, poor cash flow management can doom an otherwise viable business. Um, often here in the island, we see, you know, very seasonal ink, uh, revenue um, where uh, many expenses are not. Um, disappointing results, external shocks can stress the best business plans. And if you don't have reserves um, or access to, um, to reserves, then it can be a fatal event. So forecasting cash flow you know, needs can help you protect against failure. Um, you, you can plan to build appropriate levels of cash reserves. You can um, have triggers to um, you know, help you manage expenses and labor costs according to make sure you don't get into the red zone some point in the future. And you can identify um, you know, the needs to, to secure credit lines and or grants you know, as needed to make sure that um, any reasonable set of circumstances uh, are survivable, because that's really the key thing we're working here. So, you know, cash flow is, is one of the, you know, the four kinds of financial statements, you know, every business should be uh, comfortable with. You know, one is just understanding your, your transaction flow, um, orders and other activities. Your income statement, um, which obviously is, you know, your profit and loss, you know, looking at incomes in the current, you know, point of time, your balance sheet, which captures your assets and liabilities. And then the cash flow statement shows the cash effects um, that are linked you know, quite closely to, the, to both the income statement and the balance sheet. It shows, you know, the simplest way to think about it is a cash flow statement will look at you know, a projection of what your bank balance will be. Um, it's the simplest form you can think about this. Um, but of course, there are other forms of, uh, of you know, liquid assets that you can use as well. But they're all linked together. Um, the income statement specifically is a major feeder of the cash flow statement. So, uh, you know, cash flow statements show flows of cash in and out during a period. Um, all the items in the statement will relate directly back to the income statement or the balance sheet. And it, it looks at different kinds of cash flows. For most of us, we'll be focused on cash flow from operations. But larger uh, enterprises or cases where you may be buying big equipment or, or you know, other assets, there's cash flow from investment activities and from financing activities that can be considered. So you know, the bottom line of the cash flow statement is the net change in cash, which shows whether the business was a net generator or user of cash. And it's to be noted here that you can have a profitable business, but you can be put out of business by requiring too much cash. 
by the way in which you're spending, looking at your resources um, and making investments that maybe can't be supported by the amount of cash flow you have coming in from, from operations. So while, while closely related, the income statement and your cash flow you know, are, are different and need to be you know, looked at separately. So this is the only detailed slide I'll show you um, in this presentation uh, because you know, every, every situation will be unique. But um, here's an example of you know, those three statements, you know, the key statements we talked about, the income statement on the far left, a balance sheet uh, there in the middle, and then a cash flow statement you know, on the right. And so if you look at these different statements, the income statement showing that the business has a net profit of $5,000. That's good. Um, the balance sheet shows that um, the, the business has, at the start of the period, um, $18,000 in cash. At the end of the period, you know, $20,000 in cash. So even though there's a profit of $5,000, there was only a $2,000 increase in cash. So it's important that then the cash flow statements give, gives you insight in terms of why is there a difference between you know, those two numbers. So um, if you look at that the, the column on the right, you see cash flow from operations. So the net, here's the net profit of $5,000. Now, in the, if you look at the um, income statement, there's depreciation there uh, charged against your net profit. Well, that's a non-cash expense. So that can be added to your net profit from a cash perspective. There's, but there's a decrease in accounts receivable, which is a $2,000 negative adjustment. There's a de decrease in inventory, which is a $1,000 negative adjustment, an increase in accounts payable, which is a $2,000 positive adjustment, and an increase in accrued payroll of $1,000. So the net cash from operations with all those, those ins and outs uh, ends up to be about $6,000. But you then purchased $3,000 of equipment, um, which consumed $3,000 in cash, and you, and you received, um, you also, um, your loan reduced by, by $1,000. You paid off your loan, and let me just confirm that's correct. Yes, you paid off $1,000 of your loan, so that consumed another $1,000 of your cash. So the net cash of the business was $2,000, not the $5,000 of net profit. So um, again, a lot of these, these items you know, are controllable. You can choose, obviously, when you buy equipment, um, you can put more energy into you know, increasing your accounts, you know, getting your, bringing in your accounts receivable um, and, and within limits, you know, uh, stretching out your payables. And so the controls you have to manage your cash flow that you know, go beyond a simple you know, profit and loss statement. So um, as many of us experience you know, um, on the island here, you know, if this is a view of a bank balance over time where the vertical axis is the amount of money you have in the bank account, now, most of us, you know, you know, hit a low point of the year around uh, April or May or early June uh, before the, you know, the seasonal rush occurs. And so um, our bank balances are, are leanest at that time, which unfortunately happened to coincide with our current crisis. We then build up reserves over the summer and then gradually work those off again, you know, through, through the leaner times of the rest of the year. Now, with our current situation, um, we're seeing the inability to, to build up our, our, our income you know, from the summer at some reduced rate that we don't know about. We know we've already been hit for uh, April and May, um, but all indications are there'll be some further reductions and opportunity uh, for almost all of us, um, at least through the summer and under some scenarios for two plus years. So um, you know, we're already we're maybe on a curve that looks more like that red line where we actually will have negative bank balances you know, soon um, that need to be um, addressed by delaying expenses, securing grants and loans, um, or um, eliminating expenses entirely. And then hopefully we get some, somewhat of an increase, but then if we project it out further in that curve, then what is, we can project out to next year to see what, you know, what our balances might be. So there's a whole range of uncertainty here. So there's a short-term need to make sure you've got enough cash to, to meet any ongoing payrolls and rent and other expenses you can't defer. But it's also important to try to, try to project out what might be a range of scenarios um, and, and determine whether you can survive those scenarios. And now, while you might while you still have some resources and, and possibly access to capital you might not have later, arrange for financing or lines of credit so that you can survive you know, a, 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 a worst case scenario. So 
the real key cat task I recommend we all take, um, and I'm doing that for businesses I'm involved in, is to figure out how to survive and ultimately prosper without permanently ho hobbling your business. And so building you know, several spreadsheet scenarios of both your profit and loss and your cash flow, you know, a low impact uh, scenario, which hopefully is a, you know, is a, a has, you know, close to with the reality we hope to see, which has modest, relatively short term impacts through the summer. Um, but then a higher impact scenario, which might um, be either might experience much larger impacts. Now, what if the uh, if the shelter in place order extends through June? What if um, the summer season is reduced by pick a number 50% um, and that, you know, you know, people are, are scared to come to the island, scared to go to restaurants, scared you know, to stay at hotels, not just this year, but you know, next year as well. Um, you know, most scenarios you know, indicate that a, that a vaccine will not be available for you know, 18 months or more. Um, if you look at some of the surveys of consumer behavior as of today, uh, three quarters of consumers are not uh, comfortable going to a restaurant. Uh, now, hopefully that will change over time, but, you know, with only uh, less than 5% of the population uh, um, immune to this, this virus, um, this is going to be a, a, could be a longer term impact. And the question is, if you model out what might be a more hopefully pessimistic scenario, you know, can you survive it? Um, and looking at the numbers, can you craft a strategy now to lower your business costs and secure necessary cash? For that high impact scenario, if needed. So um, another name for what, what this is, what you can call this, is a resilience analysis, um, and to look at you know, what's necessary for you to survive over a longer term of a you know a, a worse toward the worst case scenarios. And you know, frankly, is there a revenue threshold that below which you no longer think you have a viable business, and you may need and you, you may want to consider exit strategies, uh, possibly sooner rather than later. Um, hopefully that doesn't come to that, but you know the the, uh, the after time may look different than 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 uh, the past, and uh, you know having that that idea in your in your head about okay what do I need to be aiming for, to make this you know worthwhile to me long term, and just confirming that yes you're on target to get there or beyond. Now the flip side of all this, and this is a bit of whistling past the graveyard here, is that not every business on the island will will survive this. Um, but, the, but the survivors will then have less competition for the business that does remain. And so if you can be proactive, if you can think, you know, think about uh, how you survive this through both revenue generating strategies and cost strategies, uh, there actually might be a better place at the other end than you may have experienced in the past. But you have to get from here to there and by, by, by doing this kind of analysis and, and, and arranging this kind of financing. So you know, in the pandemic, you know, there, there, there are various ways in which you can um, you know, help your, your cash situation. Um, I think most of you have attended some of these other sessions where there are some opportunities for grants and forgiveness. You know, I've been very impressed by many of the island landlords uh, forgiving at least some rent for some period of time um, to keep their, their tenants uh, you know, in business. Uh, we've talked about the different disaster grants and the, and the paycheck protection program. Uh, many of you may also may not be aware that you know, fallback for all these, even if you didn't get the disaster grant or the Paycheck Protection Program, is a 50% uh, credit against your payroll, at least for Q2 and probably for Q3, uh, in something called the Employee Retention Credit. Don't have time to go into the details here yet, but that's kind of a fallback that you have that can reduce your labor costs you know, during this window that's available to everyone without any application. Um, and then there's the opportunity to get um, either payment deferrals or loans, obviously less desirable because you're going to have to pay them back at some later date. But from a cash management point of view, it can get you, it can get you through the, the bottom of the curve here, bottom of, of that curve and, and able to get to the, the future state. So obviously, you know, any deferrals around landlords and rent um, and utilities, taxes, almost every utility provider has some kind of um, deferral strategy. The federal government has some, some, uh, some fairly um, good tax deferral options. Um, obviously, your personal taxes through July, July 15th. Um, locally, um, if you look, you know, the county does offer some 
payment options, but frankly, at fairly steep interest rates that make them, I think, relatively unattractive. Uh, there's the disaster loan component, not the grant, but the loan component that can provide um, you know, cash, cash you know, with deferred payments. Um, and that can be roughly six months of working capital. Uh, there's the Paycheck Pr Protection Program loan component, again, not the grant, but the loan. Even if you get, if you get that Paycheck Protection loan, even if you don't qualify for, for some of the forgiveness, you still have a 1% loan uh, that you're not paying on for six months. And uh, it can be paid back over, I think it's two or three years. Um, then there are small business loans, guaranteed loans. So that these are the traditional loans that the Small Business Administration has given uh, to lenders who might not otherwise qualify. Um, these will be higher rates, more in the 5% range, um, and will go through typical bank, uh, a bank lending protocol, but it, it do, does provide access to capital to some people that might not normally get um, a bank loan. Some credit cards have offered deferred um, uh, payment um, and or um, uh, uh, interest um, forgiveness for a, a short period of time. And finally, there are commercial lenders that again, if you have a viable business um, that are, will, you know, would be willing to um, lend to you to get to the other side, um, um, but to demonstrate that you need to demonstrate that you have a viable business at, at the back end. So all these strategies can be ways in which you can you know, reduce expenses and or get access to capital in the short term to get through that hump. And I'm not gonna go through all these, but there's also a universe of, 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 of other credit providers um, that range from very reasonable rates to close to usurious rates, um, depending on who you're working with and the purpose uh, you have. If you've got assets, you can, you can borrow against assets. You can get lines of credit um, and the like. And there's, again, there's been a large explosion of these kind of firms out there that can, can be a source of capital in extremis, um, though they'll be more expensive than the options, and generally be more expensive than the options I just, I just identified. So uh, just to conclude on, on the presentation portion of this before we go to any questions, um, you know, this can be complicated. There are a lot of options. You know, um, you know, use your business advisors, either formal or informal. Your banker can give you advice on this um, if you have an existing relationship. Um, and then there's the organization I represent, uh, SCORE, which provides you know, free business mentoring services. And I can talk through any specific situations you might have um, and options I'm aware of to you know, help you know, get from one side to the other. So with that, I'll, I'll stop sharing the presentation. I just open up to any questions people might have. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so just looking in the chat, um, there's nothing in the chat, but why don't we go ahead and unmute folks and is there enough of us here to make it more of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mickey, for some reason my unmute all button isn't working. Oh, wait, maybe they are unmuted. Here, I'll speak. Can you hear me? Oh, hey, yes. <laughs> I figured I'd test it out. It works. So, does anybody, uh, does anybody have any questions for Chris about, uh, well, cash flow or any of these, um, any of these uh, small business solutions that he, uh, he kind of breezed by some of it. A lot of you guys might already be familiar uh, with these programs, but you know, there's obviously a good time to talk about things like the, uh, the uh, play retention tax credit or any of the SBA programs. Um, this is Felicity here. Um, I think I heard via um, the EDC, um, but I wanted to just kind of hear it from you directly. And that is using or applying for both unemployment and the PPP at the same time. I understand that it's considered double dipping. And, you know, I applied for both. I think I've suddenly got unemployment and I don't know anything about the PPP yet. So if both get approved, can you just keep one as a backup, like the PPP to use later since it's got a two year loan? Window? Yeah, to clarify things, so you can, you can use, the, the loan, use the PPP as a loan, um, even if you don't take advantage of the forgiveness portion of it. So okay. you can't take the same wage dollars um, and um, you know, get unemployment for that 
and then also claim uh, forgiveness credit on their PPP. But, but again, the PP, remember that the PPP forgiveness period is only, only eight weeks. And so you can use unemployment before PPP, after PPP, or just stay in unemployment entirely and use the value of the PPP as, as, a, as a very inexpensive loan, which, which, is, which is also a good outcome. Yeah, okay. Thank you. And Chris, because we are, you know, we were just on a, we had a commerce call yesterday where they were talking about, um, you know, we're inside of the eight weeks now on PPP, uh, the eight weeks that would end June 30th. And well, my understanding is that, it, it, no, it's, that's the application period for a, uh, PPP, but the eight weeks starts from the point you get the loan and can go beyond June 30th. Okay. That's my understanding. Oh, okay. Because uh, I've been, all right. Hi, this is Leslie. I have a question. Yes, um, for owner operators uh, uh, who do not have employees, mm -hmm. what, what sort of resources are available? So we have a tenant who has a, a retail shop and she's just, you know, been out of business. So just, I would like to know, you know, what, what resources she may have. Actually, uh, all, all three major resources are available to the self-employed. Um, that's, you know, the, the disaster grant, though, those monies are, are have, they haven't run out already. They're just about to. Uh, likewise, the PPP is available to the self-employed as well. Um, and unemployment. Um, all three of those are available. Now, the challenge with all, all the self-employed self is establishing the payroll base that all these, these programs work off of. And so you need to have um, either, um, if you paid yourself um, you know, um, and paid payroll taxes on it, you'll have your W-2 statements or your 941s in front of the business to establish that. If you're self, self proprietor and just in claiming your income on your Schedule E, I'm uh, sorry, Schedule C, um, you can look at line 31 there to be a, be a wage base for that. Um, we did get some clarification just the last uh, few days um, about um, the wage, what's included in the PPP wage ca uh, calculation, and that they're not inc allowing inclusion of any Schedule E income. So, and they will not allow you to count any real estate um, earnings on Schedule E or partnership earnings or, 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 or S corporation dividends um, against the wage base. The, the principle in all these programs is they're, they're all a form of unemployment insurance. And they're really focused on trying to determine what's the core wage base you're paying, whether you're a, a, an employee, a contractor, or a self-employed individual paying yourself. But you know, those, all programs, all three programs are available to self-employed. It's not just the, the complication of calculating what that wage base is. Okay, because she, she's, um, and maybe um, you know, I'll connect her with you because she uh, was just at a loss and, and, and felt that nothing was coming through for her. And uh, yeah, yeah so, so, uh, funny, a lot of clients are, let's say they were self-employed and did not have a lot of income from a retail, you know, retail establishment, whatever last year. Um, I'm finding that a good outcome for many is to apply for unemployment. Um, you can often do, you know, sort of backdate your eligibility to the beginning of April. Um, and even if, the, if you're, you're only granted the minimum unemployment, I think it's roughly $110 a week or something, um, you're still eligible to get all $600 a week of the federal supplement through the end of end of uh, July, which is nearly $3,000 a month. So um, a number of people have found that to be you know, the best um, uh, option um, available to them. Okay, so just so I, I get that, so I can pass this on. So <clears throat> applying for unemployment, which can go back to the beginning of um, April. Yep. And then secondly, what was the other one, the federal program? Well, just, just in that process, um, the, way, the way the state, and again, John, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, the Employee Security Department will often give you like a minimum grant, self-employed people a minimum grant because they haven't really figured out how to do your wage base yet. And it may only, because okay. uh, they haven't figured out yet, but just the fact they've given you any grant at all uh, makes you eligible for the $600 federal payment. Okay. And Got it. Leslie, I I can give you a little bit more um, just because we're starting to hear, you know, this program is now two and a half weeks old um, for self-employed people. Um, what we're finding out is that the minimum is 235 on the state. Um, and it, you know, they're, because you're probably, or your tenant is probably a 1099 employee. 
um, who's not paying themselves through payroll, not making contributions. So, she, so they would get the minimum state, the state pandemic unemployment assistance. And there's a lot of acronyms floating around. This is called, this is the yeah. PUA. Yeah. So the PUA was the, uh, is actually allows the state to backdate your claim to the beginning of February. So you, it, it, this is one of those things when you initially apply for unemployment, you'll be able to tell them what, you know, the date you separated from work. And uh, this goes back to January 27th for whatever reason. They have also extended payroll, uh, th uh, sorry, unemployment benefits by 13 weeks at the same time. So there's now up to 39 weeks of unemployment benefits available from Washington state. Um, and this is I, all I think what I'll do because I'm, I'm not capturing. I mean, my, my brain is not <laughs> following. Okay, sure. So I think I may just put her in touch with you or give her your contact information no, because fine. she's just really desperate, you know, just very, you know, it's just, is um, it's a tough situation for her. And sure. I think okay. um, you'll be able to really help her navigate the system because she has said that she's not been successful in any way mm -hmm. uh, with relief. Well, okay. Sometimes it's just timing. A lot of people just in the last week have started to see their checks show up um, okay. and, and or get PPP granted. So um, if she's in the process and applied you know, reasonably early, you know, by um, you know, middle of April, there's an excellent chance she's just still in the queue and, and that you know, she'll magically see uh, uh, some checks show up and okay. or you know, be granted. Okay. Right. If she, apply, if she applied before April 19th and she was self-employed, she's, she's probably she's stuck somewhere. If she applied after April 19th, um, then she's, you know, she's probably already, you know, she would be seeing stuff. If she hasn't applied at all, then, you know, it's... it's I would it's, think she would have. But again, I, I think I'd like to get her in touch with, with sure. you. Okay. Um, that's probably the my, best. Yes, they can call the office or I just put my email address in the, uh, in the chat box here. Oh, thank you. Sure. Thank you. And Chris or John, you might want to mention so there was that uh, confusion about uh, people who applied for the idol before uh, uh, March 31st. Um, and so some of those, it sounds like, can reapply still if they haven't already. So, yeah, so um, maybe you can clarify that. Basically, the, the Small Business Administration changed computer systems and lost all the applications before <laughs> March 30th. Um, <laughs> And so you're, you're instructed to, if you, so you can, you can determine whether you were in that loss queue by looking, if, if you saved your confirmation number, um, mm -hmm. when you applied, if it starts with a three, you're okay. If it, if, if it doesn't, you're not. And you need to reapply. Glad to hear that. <laughs> but I'm not sure you even, unfortunately, I don't think you can reapply. I think they've shut off the site yeah. now. Um, I think the last thing we heard was that it was an announcement, I think it was just yesterday, about the yeah. agriculture businesses they've opened up idle to. And buried in that announcement, they said, even though it tells you that only agriculture businesses are eligible, if you had a two in your thing, then, then you also can do oh, it. Uh, but maybe right. you know that. Can, uh, clear. And you don't lose your place in queue from when you originally applied either, is also what they said with that. So. So this is Donna. Hi guys. I'm so so already on Orcus. I know Leslie and Felicity. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> um, I talked to you, Chris, about um, when this started. <clears throat> I was fifteen thousand dollars backwards because my credit card companies or the customers revoked their credit card charges that I had for deposits. Since then, I have actually worked with Islanders Bank, and they have given me a collateral loan at five percent to cover my overdraft and to go forward for three months at least and put off my payments for six months. That's great. So that's to hear an that. option too to check with your local bank because they are actually wanting to work with us. I mean, because I don't get, I, I've been not qualified for anything. They've, I've got, you know, no, you don't qualify. You haven't paid yourself enough. So it's like, it's been a nightmare, but at the same time, it's like, I just went to my bank and said, okay, I'm either filing bankruptcy or you can help me and they help me. So, Great to hear that. Yeah. Donna, did unemployment, uh, did you try applying for unemployment yet? Or? Yeah, because I didn't pay myself enough. Okay, so there's a <laughs> oxymoron here. I'm a sole proprietor. I did owner draws, but I didn't pay myself enough to, in order to qualify for what the, even the minimum was. So, yeah, whatever. Really? Oh. <laughs> hmm. uh, it's the first I've heard that. Yeah, me too. That's a new one. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe I wonder Donna, if that's we, what my tenant's running into as well. Yeah. Donna, maybe we could, uh, could you contact, uh, give me a call this afternoon? Um, and maybe we, uh, and we could talk about that offline just because I don't, I, that's the first, that's the first time hearing of any minimum not being met. Yeah, do you know what that amount is? No, they won't, they, they didn't tell me. They just said that I didn't qualify. So. Uh, oh. Donna, did you, did you apply before April 19th? Yes. And okay. I have gotten letters saying to reapply, which I haven't done yet because I got okay. the money. Uh, okay. Back. Okay. All right. Cool. So you, you know, have the 680 letter, um, yeah. which is an auto, which is auto generated. That's what, that was one of the billion upgrades they were having to make to the system um, when this all, thing all started for self-employed. You should definitely reapply. Okay. You, I mean, today. Okay. Um, and make sure you put in the, the date you separated from your employment, whatever date that was, you okay. know, if it was before March, uh, put that in because you know you'll you can there are two pat there are two pots of money there's the money from the state which is maybe just the minimum of 235 and then there's the 600 from the fed which is which starts on the weekend in april 4th and all these benefits are retroactive so you know i mean it's not going to you know be a tens of thousands of dollar windfall but it's going to it would provide you some you know capital to just keep keep the wheels rolling Right. And John, isn't another complication is that now when she does reapply, she's going to reapply for she's going to apply for standard unemployment, get rejected, and then be yes. invited to apply for pandemic unemployment. Yes. And and when you do, but that's that's just how the system has to work because you have to you have they have to kick they have to say okay you don't apply by the normal rules so right. you now qualify to apply under the emergency rules and. When you set up your account, your SAW account, your secure access account, you'll, you know, you basically, that's your way in. And the system's pretty stable now. I haven't heard anybody in the last few days having a problem getting on now. They, they it's more, more staying on. Um, so you'll, you'll file your initial claim within a few hours or a day, you'll get a notice um, saying you've been denied because of, you know, not enough hours. And that's fine. But then you'll have another link to uh, apply for PUA. So you go there, the application starts off a lot like the application you just did because they recycle the screens. But then once it starts to parse out where you are, like how you make your money um, and that you're more in the self-employed pool, then it'll start to ask you the relevant questions about your business. It'll give you an opportunity to upload your um, tax documents so that they can verify your wages. And, um, and, then, you'll, and then you'll be set to receive both the PUA and then the FPUC. The FPUC is the federal, the 600, so we should just keep calling it. Um, but yeah, I'll try is, again to see what happens. This is a good time to do it because the system isn't overloaded right now, so you're not gonna get, you know, keep getting booted out of the thing. I, no, no, think... I, I did it and, um, you know, I was denied like you were in the beginning and then I reapplied after the 19th and didn't hear anything. I think I confused matters by, I put in my company name as my employer, but mm -hmm. then I also said I was self-employed. Right. So it's got a little confused, but just yesterday I had a bunch of money in my account. So something's come through and, you and can, so it does work. So do sure. it. <laughs> and you can go online and look in your, you know, when you log back in, you know, yeah. go to your login page, you can see messages coming in from them. They're pretty, they're pretty communicative about what's happening next. And mm -hmm. you can also see like how your benefits, like how they're measuring out your weekly pays and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, d dig around in there. It's, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information for you once, once, once you've got it all set up. Okay. Thank okay. you. Guys. Sure. Oh my God. We helped somebody today. <laughs> <laughs> we won guys. We won one. <laughs> But Donna, if you have any trouble, please uh, please reach out to us and you know we'll make sure you're getting everything plugged in accordingly. Thank you. Okay, and you too, Felicity. Although I'm glad you got your money. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm glad you got. I'm glad you got paid. That's great. Yeah. We, we love hearing success stories about this. You know, now that it's now that it, we're finally a couple of weeks into it. So. Well, I just think it's cool that the Islanders Bank actually, I mean, I've been trying to get a loan with them for 10 years, literally, literally. I mean, every year I apply for a loan and every year they decline. And this year, I mean, you know, I have $174,000 sitting in assets in my shop and they're just like, we can't give it to you. And I just said, okay, well then I'm filing bankruptcy. And he's like, let's, let's talk about that again. Take some pictures. Back yeah. in. <laughs> They've given me a loan. So. 
you know, through this whole PPP um, uh, scenario for the last few weeks now, um, what we've been hearing back is that the local banks, the Islanders and um, Islanders and Heritage and and and, and Wafet, um, have really been coming through with for for the for the local businesses here that have been applying for those versus you know people who have gone to Wells Fargo and Bank of America and you know just gotten stuck in the queue with you know their much larger corporate clients ahead of them. So um, our local banks have really done a, a, an outstanding job under you know under incredibly difficult situation. So we're, we're, we're yeah, and I've heard some very attractive it. loan terms, like for equipment loans, as low as three point three to five percent equipment loans, which is the lowest I've heard in ever. Yeah. Chris, talking about people receiving these uh, things reminded me um, of something Mary mentioned when she was on the chat and chew um, about how to set up the one's accounts for and record keeping. And I was wondering if you guys would want to want to talk about that. Uh, speaking of you know, if things go the worst case and you end up having to uh, Close well, down. It might be better actually to encourage people just to watch Mary's talk. I think it was only about 20 minutes or so because she had a bunch of tips to not only how to separate the funds, but if you think you're at risk, you know, what actions to take and not take uh, ahead of a possible bankruptcy to avoid, you know, getting you know, snagged you know, down, down the road. So that might be a good thing. Just encourage them to, to view Mary's talk. Okay, and we have the recordings linked on our website. I'll put the link in the chat and you, or sorry, in the chat box. <laughs> In our chew box. I've noticed this is now our th third week of chat and chew, fourth week. I'm starting to lose track of time. And nobody ever eats during these things. <laughs> Have you noticed? No chatting, no chewing. I know, there's a lot of chatting, no chewing. I feel we may have to change the title of this thing. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll start a poll. Well, lots of lots of good information. Can this is my first time joining? Can you tell me who who is? So, is this all San Juan Islands, or is this just Orcas? Uh, this is all of San. This is San Juan County. We, we, oh, San Juan uh, County. Okay, San yeah. Juan County. We got it. Yeah. And um, some of you, I don't, I don't know if you guys get this through the newsletter or through Facebook. If you don't follow our Facebook page, um, please do. You don't have to. Um, you don't actually have to be a Facebook person to uh, look at what we're doing. You can just um, look at there. But we have a pretty robust news feed uh, that's updated several times a day. Um, we pull through a lot of primary source material uh, that's relevant to small business in Washington State, in San Juan County. We try not to send you guys down rabbit holes that are going to turn out just to be things for King County or, you know, that we're, you know, people here are just not going to qualify for it. But we do find some, we do find some gems from time to time. We try to push through updates on PPP idle when the ESD thing was changing uh, for unemployment. That was a big, that was a big topic. And we have a lot of stuff, you know, we have a lot of programs going, you know, we're, we're, we're not shut down. We're, we're here working for you guys um, morning, noon and night. So, you know, That's please, really uh, great. please, the, we, we, we're pushing information out mm -hmm. constantly to you guys. So please, you know, just, uh, just follow us. Great. Uh, Facebook address up here on the chat box. I threw out on the chat box also the um, the resources page that John's been maintaining. We've got a so that's a little bit more stable than the Facebook page. It's a little slower to update, but it's got things it's got a lot of uh, links to a lot of the resources. Um, uh, and with the that page focuses mostly on uh, the larger programs, but it also has links to a matrix of lots of things from the island scale to the whole national scale from for-profit businesses, or sorry, from things offered by nonprofits to things offered by governments. So there's a lot of resources there too. John, you may have heard in one of your meetings with the, the state, um, you know, when mm -hmm. the governor uh, listed the counties that, that listed some counties that were uh, able to go faster, Mm -hmm. um, and we weren't on that list. Did, was there an explanation of why we weren't on that list? Uh, there was an explanation of why those counties were on that list. I think the I think San Juan County is taking that up in their meetings this week um, to discuss uh, with Department of Health here um, what the you know how they fit into that metric and why you know what in, what improvements they need to make. Um, some of it had to do with medical facilities that are available. 
um, remembering that, you know, it's not just about people getting outside and, you know, starting to go about their business again, but it's about making sure that the medical uh, infrastructure can't get overwhelmed uh, by the metrics that they're seeing overall in terms of population and in terms of risk groups. So there's, you know, there's kind of a lot of, there's a lot more uh, statistical factoring going on there, but I think that's something that's being brought, you know, being worked through this week in County Council. So. This is Leslie. I have a question about um, building, you know, prop building owners, I guess, tent, uh, landlords uh, mm -hmm. on the islands. And, um, you know, we're, we want to work with our tenants as much as we can. We also have expenses to pay. I mean, I know um, some folks, you know, the, the Oprah crowd may have some deep pockets. But, um, we're just not in that same space. So is there a forum for you know, um, sort of landlords to get together and, and brainstorm how they can help their tenants make it through these times? I've not heard. Um, John? Uh, that would be, that sounds like it would be a, a terrific, um, terrific asset. I haven't heard of anything yet uh, like that. Uh, Mickey, does that one come across your back? No. Um... There was a group of Orcas businesses that I, I uh, uh, was having meetings on Sundays, but I think that's a, a broader group. They may know somebody, if somebody started something that was just, I think, started through, started through Facebook that they were having Zoom meetings. Um, but I haven't heard anything else. You know, as a landlord myself, you know, I just, you know, I do the math and say, you know, what's in my long-term interest? Um, if, if, if forgiveness in the short term will retain my tenant in the long term, that may be a, a good business decision for me to make, uh, regardless of the short-term pain for me. I just may have more resiliency than others. You know, I've heard uh, like a Spring Street uh, landlord um, you know, tell those tenants that they only have to pay a quarter of their normal rent, the same rent they'd pay as if that space was storage, since they can't use it for retail anymore. So, you know, creative, uh, you know, you know, perspectives like that. So my yeah. landlord, sorry, Leslie. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. My, my landlord basically said, um, you know, be, because this is a new building. I mean, I just moved in this in August. He, he, I mean, I waited two years to move into this new space. So this kind of really sucks for all of us. <laughs> um, but I moved in here and he literally, when this all happened, he actually came to me and said, okay, I know you're not gonna be able to pay your rent because, you know, I explained about the bank situation. And he just said, okay, let's, let's do 90 days and then we'll regroup in 90 days and we'll see where you are. And if, you know, we need to make a payment plan or move it to the end or whatever, but he doesn't want me moving out. He's like, and no terms are you moving out. Like, you know, we want you to stay here. We'll, we'll work with you no matter what. So, I mean, I know as Leslie, you're a landlord, but I mean, and my part of it is, holy crap, he just gave me 90 days to try to figure this out. So, yeah. And, and I think we're willing to do that. The same, the same thing. It's just hard to. Um, well, I guess there's a couple of things. There's not a lot of transparency on what tenants are able to bring in in terms of right. loans and grants. Um, so you know that's just that's a little bit murky. I know loans and grants. I don't believe they're available to me um, as a landlord. I don't. I don't think so. Um, so it's just you know it's just a tough area to figure out and I think that we've been going with the strategy of just the kind of the 90 day thing like don't pay rent right now you know don't worry about it we'll figure out the stuff out later but I also have heard of, of rent forgiveness and I'm not sure how widespread that is and again I'm not sure if it's the Oprah crowd or you know I just I just don't know how people are, are kind of figuring that out and making ends meet because we we still have expenses you know we have building you know mortgages and taxes and all that stuff to pay so i'm that's why i'm just wondering if there's other folks talking about this piece the landlord piece of the puzzle yeah. and it sounds like maybe maybe not so much but i've um, heard of it yeah ha has there been a lot of i mean are most landlords being flexible and doing sort of a 90 days thing or has there been a lot of rent forgiveness I'm just kind of curious what's been going on I don't have a systematic survey um, 
but I've heard every, every single possible scenario from two months rent forgiveness to the 90 day loan to the, the 75% discount, um, you know, charge for storage. Um, and it seems to be very custom to the situation and the ability of the uh, tenant to pay. And frankly, mm -hmm. you know, some, some, you know, I've heard also some people just holding the line who like, especially uh, like outside investors um, who aren't up here in the island, just, they just holding the line, you, you know, so you have to pay it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my okay. landlord hasn't approached me about it at all. Um, so far, I've been able to meet my rent, but I've got low overhead, so it's not a huge issue, and it's a priority for me. So, right. as long as I can pay it, I'm just going to keep paying. But it would have been nice if they'd stepped forward and said, "If you need help, let us know." <laughs> yeah. And Felicity, what is your business? I'm sorry, I'm not, I have a cake business, a custom cake uh, business in Friday Harbor. Oh, okay. Got it. And, uh, Amazing. <laughs> you should work at Rosario with Donna. Um, yes. oh, but great. I do, in the summer times, I do mostly wedding cakes. And, well, obviously, big gatherings are canceled. So my whole season is shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I started February with $40,000 in orders, and now I'm negative. I owe people. Oh, so. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, it's kind of, and I'm making face masks. That's, I'm making cloth face masks for the grocery store, for the food centers. I mean, it's, it's that's great. It's kind of transition into what I can do because I can sew. So, yeah. You know, how can I help and how can I make it happen? So that's, you know, yeah. a different, different way of doing business, but it works. <laughs> you know, one, one, one really, one can break. I ask what you're, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just along those same lines, um, we heard a great story that um, the EDC sponsored a, a talk by a couple of local businesses about how they were supporting the pandemic. One of them was the, the San Juan Island Distillery over here in Roach Harbor. Mm -hmm. And their story was, you know, they, they turned their distill into making uh, hand sanitizer that they were giving away for free. Uh, people just had to stop by with their own container, and but you no, know, they 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 still had their you know their their gin and their all their other liquors and their cider available, and they found out they were people were you know, sort of a somewhat in thanks for the hand sanitizer were buying uh, their liquor products as well, and they were selling as much you know during the yeah. pandemic as they were before. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm yeah, not doing that, but I'm customers <laughs> being super super generous, mm. whether it's with tips um, or just you know, going around and sort of spreading their business to various different restaurants and different vendors, um, you know, each week, trying to just kind of spread a little bit of goodness around. Um, I had one customer buy a thousand dollars worth of gift certificates, which she took Aww. to you know, healthcare workers and the cleaning crew and uh, the hospital, um, things like that. So that helps everybody. It's really awesome mm -hmm. to see that. That's great. That is great. Speaking of gift certificates, uh, I, I happen to mention in the, the chat to uh, Donna just now, but um, there are a couple of sites that have been set up throughout the county for, um, because there were a lot of locals who wanted to be able to support businesses and just to make it easier for people to find the businesses that have uh, are selling gift cards online. Um, there's uh, the EDC set up islandstrong.com. Um, that's islands plural, so it's got two S's in the middle. Um, and Orcas has orcasstrong.com. And Lopez has another one whose name I am blanking out on. Uh, I think it might be Lopez Eats that's doing it, but I think they Lopez might be eats, yeah. more than the restaurants. Um, Orca Strong and Island Strong definitely do all kinds of businesses. And I think Lopez Eats had been doing it for lots of different kinds as well. And that would keep one, some revenue coming in uh, with the gift cards. Um, yeah. In a sense, that's kind of a loan. Yeah, I'm on both of those. They've actually, I've actually sold a couple of them for Christmas gifts coming. So it's actually a really good idea. And actually the EDC, it, I think it was Becky that called me and got me set up on it. So oh, cool. All right. Okay. Well, anybody else have any other questions um, or anything they're concerned about? This is a great, you know, these 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 things that we do every Tuesday, Thursday. We have a, you know, guest speaker. We have a little bit of an agenda, but we also open it up to you know as as wide a ranging discussion as you guys want to have. You know, about about literally anything. And 
stuff we have answers to and some we don't, but you know, it's, it, it helps us navigate and figure out what, you know, what we can do best for you. So. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you.